it is Christmas again. And now it is Christmas again. And Christmas lasts until Easter. But that's not true. No, that's not true. Because between those two, there's fasting. Welcome to Shit Island. Welcome to Shit Island. We also have that song in Denmark, by the way. I know. Oh, yeah. It's on the, the, um, on the Wikipedia page for it. I th- believe um, it says that the author of it is Mads Hansen, which sounds like a Danish name. That does sound very Danish, yeah. Yeah, he was a Danish um, a poet. or Well, it says bard. Bard? <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if you, I'd call him a bard, though. <laughs> it seems... He was born in in 1834. Well, I guess that is the appropriate time for to call yourself a bard. Yeah, I think so. You can't really call yourself a bard anymore. That would be so cool, though, if you just came out with a mixtape and you're like, "I'm the bard of a generation." Yeah. <laughs> um. So it's Christmas. It's like Mer- it's Christmas. Mary... Yeah, Merry Christmas. When when can you call it Christmas? People always get so upset if you say, hey, it's Christmas, if it's not this or this date. What's the um, Swedish take on when, it's, when Christmas is? Oh, well, we, we have the... Because every Sunday of December, there is... Advent. Advent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so the first Advent is... So the first Sunday of December is when you can start calling it Christmas. Oh, that makes I, sense, I yeah. I believe, uh, yeah, this this year, the first Advent, the first Sunday in December, just happened to be the first of December. That is true. It was. Yeah, so, I, I, in my eyes, it's been Christmas since the first of December. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's the generally accepted uh, f- uh, thing people go for here, too. I don't know. Mm. For me, like... It's probably because I'm getting older, too, and I'm not surrounded by immediate family all the time. But, like, uh, for me, Christmas is kind of when all the shops and decorations start to become Christmassy. Oh, and they, also, that's yeah. already happened here. Yeah, no, that happens in October here or something. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, actually, we had, um, I noticed we had Christmas decorations on Black Friday, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and there, were, there were people singing Christmas carols. Uh, in in the mall during Black Friday, and I was like thinking like Black Friday that's usually associated with Thanksgiving in the U.S. That's a completely different holiday. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think it's the same in the U.S. Though I think they kind of go Christmas wild for Black Friday or immediately following Thanksgiving now. Yeah, I mean it, it definitely is like the day after Thanksgiving. That's when Christmas starts. Yeah, I mean like. We have this thing in Denmark. I don't know if you do. We have like serialized TV shows that run throughout December, like Christmas yeah. calendar well, TV shows. Yes, I mean, yeah, we we have the Christmas calendar shows and stuff, and, and they produce a new one every year. Swedish television does. Yeah, same series. here. Yeah, we get yeah. two new ones each year, and they're always comp- competing for ratings or whatever. Oh, no, we, we just get the one, and then we also get a radio show that no one listens to, because no one listens to the radio. Radio show, that's so cool, though. I mean, I I think the radio shows might actually be better than the TV shows because the TV shows are made for like young kids. So I think the radio shows might actually be for slightly more mature audiences, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I remember watching a TV show with maybe Spike Mulligan or some of the Monty Python guys, and they talked about how radio is so underrated these days because you can you can do literally anything on radio, like you if you. Yeah. If you just add a flimsy sound effect, you can have people falling off a building or like it's the theater of the mind, right? You can make people do anything. Yeah. So there's literally no budgetary restraints on any idea you have. You can just yeah. do it and then it's there. And I think that's neat. Like that's that's cool that through the use of our imagination, we can kind of play along with any gag if it's audio. Yeah. I mean, radio and, and just audio in general, like podcasts, is just so much more convenient because you can just do something else while you're consuming the content. Yeah, who knows, maybe... You can't, you can't watch a TV show while you're also doing the dishes. Well, you can, but it's very difficult. Yeah, unless it's like a TV f- Friends or The Office or something that people fall asleep to. Yeah, I guess. But like, you can't really look at the TV while you're doing something else, like while you're working or whatever. You have to listen to it, and then that's just... Yeah, it's it takes more of your attention because you're it's like what's it called multimodal that you have to look and pay attention and listen yeah, at the it, same time. It's two senses you have to keep using. 
Yeah, and I can barely use one, so it's hard enough for me to just listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, I if to, I'm I have to switch between hearing and seeing. Yeah, me too. One uh, of them I'm 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 single modal at all times. <laughs> I, can, I can only if you're speaking to me, all vision just disappears from, from you know my <laughs> my I eyes. I just go blind. Yeah, like legally blind. Darkness so. surrounds me. Yeah, darkness surrounds me. It's very hard for me to be out in nature because it's just it's overwhelming. Mm. I just I I just faint all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm drinking um Yule must, which is a a drink that we have. I don't know if you have it in in Denmark. If it's a Nordic thing or if it's just here. I have never heard of it before. I talk to you. It is it is a well, so it's a sort of a non-alcoholic beer. Only it's very sweet. Yeah, I'd love to try it sometime. Um, yeah. We do have non-alcoholic beer that children drink at Christmas here, which is a tradition. Uh, yeah, is it like I think we might also have uh, something is uh, in Sweden is called svagdrika. It could be the same thing. I don't know. We call it vitöl, literally white beer. Um, it has pictures of Santa on it and stuff. It's very wholesome in a beer way. It is an interesting thing. I don't see it, you know, being a thing that if you introduced it into a country today, they'd be very excited about giving to children. Yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like Bacardi yeah. Breezer Christmas Child Edition. <laughs> like, I don't see that becoming like a hugely popular yeah. thing. Yeah, this is a Havana Club rum, but without alcohol, and it's made for kids. Yeah, did you have that? We had a huge controversy in Denmark a long time ago, like 15 years ago about how Bacardi wanted to introduce this vodka clown thing. Have you heard of this? No. It was like, uh, they, they wanted to, to specifically market uh, vodka products for young kids. So they wanted to like sell it in the shape of a carnival clown and then have like hard liquor inside mixed with soda and energy drink and sugar and all this stuff that children love. And then mm. they did like, the, the advertising for it was very, you know, like something out of Nickelodeon. Yeah. And they eventually, I think they eventually banned it or like they banned, uh, targeting, advertising alcohol for minors. Yeah. We, so Sweden has very strict alcohol laws, as you know. Yeah. So you like, even for non-minors, for adults, the laws, the restrictions on what you can do or say in an alcohol advertisement is very restricted. Um, one of the laws or one of the regulations is like you can't advertise. So this 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 rule applies to hard liquor, not yeah. to like beer, but like you know vodka. So you can't have a vodka commercial where you have like a group of people sitting around a table drinking vodka, being happy and smiling and stuff, because that's seen as promoting alcoholism or promoting the consumption of more alcohol than is necessary. Yeah. Uh, so, an uh, like a an alcohol commercial for, for example, vodka has to be very simple. Like, here's a picture of the bottle. Here's some information. Here's the price or whatever. And then there's a warning, like don't drink while you're pregnant, or like drinking while pregnant can hurt your child and that kind of stuff. Right. Or don't don't drink and drive. You know, like there are in cigarette packages. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I know. I know that it's it's interesting because I think like one of the th the main cultural differences to Sweden that we perceive in Denmark is your restrictive alcohol laws because drinking is such a it's such an institution in Denmark to, yeah. to almost a comical degree it's become like a kitsch thing that any Dane that goes to Sweden has to take a selfie in front of a Systembolaget uh, store yeah. <laughs> the stores that sell alcohol because it's like look this is where they buy their alcohol like that's the yeah. the big like so, this is wacky type thing that Danes for do. Those who don't know Systembolaget is a state-owned company in Sweden which is the only company which is licensed to sell alcohol above four point whatever percentage alcohol four point two five i think it is yeah and and i used to think it was every type of alcohol and i think no, a lot no. of things still think uh, that you way. can buy like beers and ciders and stuff in supermarkets as long as it's four percent or below yeah like i know that that the alcohol laws in denmark have changed and been tightened a lot these last 10 years or so mm. I'm, I've, i just read it up on it actually gotten ago. more liberal <laughs> oh that's interesting yeah no it's yeah. the it's it's who can buy alcohol it's something like um if you want to buy anything stronger than wine you have to be 18 um yeah. maybe even beer i think it might be you can buy beer but you can't buy wine and then at 
18 you can buy wine and hard liquor or something yeah, yeah but it's still sold in in every store that wants to sell it essentially mm. so here you have you when you turn 18 you can have any kind of alcohol but you cannot buy a bottle of it and bring it home with you you have to drink it at a pub mm. um or you know a drinking establishment uh, and, and, and like they can decide, like some pubs or some restaurants or whatever that serve alcohol, they can decide like you have to be 20 to enter. So they can discriminate against you if you're 18. Not all of them will let you in. Yeah, we have those two. We have like exclusive clubs that only yeah, cater yeah. to 21 plus or 25 plus. Yeah. Yeah. So when you turn 20, not 21, but 20, you can buy alcohol products uh, at stores and at sustainable luggage. Mm. So then you can buy actual bottles of rum or vodka, or what have you, and you can bring it home with you. But when, you're eight, when you turn 18, you can't do that. You can start out, you know, drinking at pubs, uh, you know, under supervision by adults and your parents. So it's like getting a driver's license, getting an alcohol license. Yeah, yeah I mean, pretty much. Although you don't need a license, but I mean, that would be the next logical step. You have to prove you know how dangerous alcohol is by like doing tests or whatever <laughs> that would be incredibly interesting yeah that would be yeah and then you have to like carry a card around with you that has like your picture and you're like <laughs> i am licensed to buy alcohol <laughs> and you have to go into a theory test and a practice test where you have to get drunk yeah. in front of other people and show you can be responsible <laughs> while drunk <laughs> yeah. you have like a child actor like come up to you and like trying to get you to buy them alcohol and you have to like <laughs> tell them no in different ways and like get them to go away <laughs> anyway you get, you get some you get some answer options and it's like sure dude i will gladly buy you alcohol bro or uh no sir or madam regardless of age i will not and shall not be the, the prohibitor of alcohol uh, reselling as is illegal under <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it, it says on the Wikipedia page that 45 million liters of Yulmust are consumed during December. And it's interesting because Sweden is, if I, if I got my information correct, the only country in the world where the consumption of Coca-Cola goes down in December. Is that right? Even though you get yeah. those corny ass ads, they still go down. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we do get the ads with the Santa drinking Coca Cola, but people, you don't buy Coca Cola at Christmas in Sweden. What? That's madness. So hmm. during the whole month of December, people don't buy Coca Cola; they buy Yulmust instead because that's tradition, and it's 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 also it's just nicer. Huh. So another interesting tradition we have in Sweden, which some people find very interesting or weird is that on Christmas... First of all, we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. We don't celebrate on Christmas Day. I don't know why. We just don't celebrate on the 24th. And so during Christmas Eve, there is on SVT, on Swedish television, which is our public service network, every year at the same time, I think it's 6 o'clock, I, I think, um, they send the same episode of uh it's like a di animated disney thing it's like it's called uh from all of from all of us to all of you and it's an animated christmas special produced by disney in 1958 oh yeah uh, the the martial law thing right like the what the marshall plan the marshall plan thing like all of that disney stuff and, and donald duck was huge in scandinavia after the second world war because yeah. they imported a bunch of Disney stuff, right? Or... Yeah, I think, I think that is the reason, yeah. So it's d the tradition now to watch that, the animated Christmas special from 1958 um, on, on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. uh, and something which is interesting, 1958, uh, especially something produced by Walt Disney, uh, it, can, it can be very racist. Sure. Um, there are a few scenes in there which are very questionable, 
And so every year <laughs> there is a debate uh, in families and in public, and uh, politicians sometimes take part, about which parts of, of, uh, of the series should be censored. No and, way. You know, and some conservatives are alarming that, you know, well, eventually they're just going to censor the whole thing. Because nothing's going to be acceptable anymore. You know, we started censoring a few things, and then we censored another thing. And, oh, now they're taking away this part. Well, I used to love that part when I was a kid, but now they're taking it away because it's offensive to whoever. Um, and it becomes this whole debacle about a fucking Christmas special produced in 1958 that no one outside of Sweden even gives a shit about. Not even Disney gives a shit about that film anymore. But it, it becomes like a political question about which part of this fucking Christmas special should be censored and which should be left in. And no one likes it. No one likes watching it. No one enjoys sitting down and watching that stupid fucking thing that we've watched for like 20 years in a row. Or 50 years, if you're 50 years old, you know, if, uh, age, years. Uh, no one enjoys it. But we do it because it's tradition, and we argue with each other, and we get angry, and we go to bed sad, and we cry. But we do it because it's tradition, and I think that's stupid. <laughs> oh, man. I was just, I was just, as you were saying, I was just thinking how funny a House of Cards type show from Sweden would be. <laughs> just be like, here we go again. My name is Jan... Yun Shipping, and I'm gonna be the Prime Minister of Sweden through shady dealings. I'm gonna weaponize the N word. <laughs> I'm gonna weaponize the Disney, <laughs> the Disney <laughs> Christmas special. No, but like, it's generally something which like national populists, like far right nationalists, can bring up as an argument about, like, the politically correct SJWs who are running Sweden and Swedish public service, about how they're censoring this vital part of Swedish tradition, as if it's, like, been part of our culture since the 1200s or whatever. Uh, and it's Disney. And, like, it's, it's And just... it's also Disney. It's not even produced here. We just happen to watch it every year. Yeah, I mean, we have, <laughs> we have a similar thing. We have, like, a, I think we call it the Disney Christmas special that kids love. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, but it's, it's always new stuff and it's always pretty lame. So I think, I think yeah. they show this, the one same thing from the fifties or whatever. And then they just show new mm -hmm. cartoons in the show. And it looks so different from when I was a kid. Like it's all, uh, very differently animated to each other. And like, sometimes there's trailers in it. Like there's trailers for upcoming Disney movies or whatever. And it just, it, the intro and outro just seems so quaint now because it's just like, 1950s animation and 1950s voiceover mixed with like Disney shorts where they're all on their smartphones and stuff. So it just seems very disjointed. But but yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. Like, is is it just the same special repeated over and over since the 50s, or is there new stuff every year in it? So, uh, sometimes they add like one new thing from a new movie that's come out this year from Disney. Okay, yeah. Well, maybe I I don't know. I just, I, I, just, I just can't imagine caring about that stuff, <laughs> like, for real. Like, I mean, I don't. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, but it's but just, a lot of yeah. people do. Yeah, 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 no, it's, I mean, I, I get what, I, you know what, to be completely controversial and fair, I completely get what those right-wing nationalists are talking about. If I was them, I would be freaking out all the time, because, like, <laughs> we are, yeah. like, we, like, there has been a very rapid change in society as to what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. Like, that's mm. just a fact. Like, uh, a lot of words have become very uncool over the last, let's say, five years that were cool before that. And the same mm. with, like, the types of jokes you used to make versus the types of jokes people make now. Like, the status quo is changing very quickly with the internet and social media. Like, you can't really get away with being a total asshole um to anyone anymore which i mean is like i'm not saying it's a bad development <laughs> but i'm just saying that if you are like my age or older then it's 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 scary because like as you get older in general too uh, change becomes scary because your brain just isn't equipped to handle it the same way and like it's very easy to make a slippery slope type 
uh, connection string in your brain that just says, well, if I can't keep up now, what's, you know, how will I be able to talk to anyone in 10 years? It's like, if you are a raging racist and misogynist and whatever, I can totally get why they feel like the world is falling apart because of all of this, because I can't like remember reading about a time in history where s something has changed social norms so drastically uh, uh, as social media is doing right now. Because it, it, mm. it, is, it is, you know, it's a, a lot of bad behavior and stuff that like it used to be you could just say a very ableist term and that would be fine. But now it's like, everyone's on the internet so everyone will share a story about how it hurt them and how you know their lives have gotten tremendously worse because people use it so you know um nonchalantly so you're forced to sort of be confronted with how harmful unintentionally certain words and behaviors are so you reflect and you change and you weren't confronted with that like 10 years ago you just weren't so i mean it's yeah i don't i don't know it's um, scary. And like, I would say for the vast majority of people, the people that said ableist and racist stuff in the past that didn't mean, that didn't mean it in a malicious way, they don't mind. But the people who did mean it maliciously, they mind because they, they still, they want those days back when people didn't care or people mm. uh, didn't see it as the malicious, you know, thing it was. So yeah, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. But yeah, <laughs> no, no, I, I get it. I, and I have one thing that, that I, I want to add to that. But first, I wanted to, I looked it up, what, what parts of the of thing that have been censored throughout the years. Mm -hmm. So the first one that has been, the, the first part that has been censored was because it's shown to children and, you know, public service is meant to you know, have a certain standard and be responsible for what they produce and, and show on television and that kind of stuff. So there's this scene in um, in one of the skits or show animated whatevers where um, Mickey Mouse and Goofy and Donald Duck are camping and they are in, um, they're in a camper van and uh, they're eating, I believe, corn and Goofy sticks, so it takes his fork and sticks it into an electrical outlet. And the corn which he's holding turns into popcorn. Oh yeah, I've seen that, I think, yeah. Yeah. So that was censored because, you know, they didn't really want kids to try it. Oh. Which I think is reasonable. I, I don't know if anyone, if any kids actually ever did <laughs> hold the corn on the cob and... and you know, plug a fork into an electrical outlet to see if they would get popcorn. But, I mean, if they did, that would be bad. That's interesting. That's like, um, you know, you know, H.C. H. Anderson, the fantasy writer who wrote The Little Mermaid and all that. Um, he, mm. he was under a lot of criticism in his day because he would write these fantastical stories with, um, you know, fantastical beings. And a lot of literary people and concerned parents would, you know, write him and say, He's corrupting the youth because he's giving them these fantastical ideas about the world and they're not going to be able to distinguish between what someone does in a story and what really happens so it's like mm. you have to some like you have to take a side in that it was like do we think kids are capable of watching someone on tv do something that harms them and realize that just because they're doing it they shouldn't be doing it or just because it's mm. in on tv doesn't mean that it exists like it's like I think, uh, I think the the point isn't that all kids will do it. I think the fear is that one kid will do it. <laughs> yeah, which for for public service, which is meant to be this like independent and very reasonable and logical and you know responsible thing in society, you know that's enough. You know they, yeah, don't want to make too many jokes or make too light of anything in on public service. See, I think that's going overboard. I think that's going overboard. Yeah. Uh, I think that's reading too much into it, and I think, like, entertainment in general is... Like, if, if you want to go through it like that, if you want to go through it with that lens, I think you have to censor yeah. a lot of stuff, too. Because a lot yeah. of t cartoons and movies also aimed at children feature people getting horrendously hurt. So, I mean... Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think... Getting hurt, I think, is one thing... But this is a scene where Goofy is 
like because he's not getting hurt is the thing oh true yeah it's the yeah. it's the corn yeah like his corn on the cob is turning into popcorn like that's a good thing kids love popcorn yeah so he's not getting hurt and so he's not showing the like oh that really hurt he's just like you know he, he gets popcorn and that might be problematic Okay, so here's my mm. next question. How many situ- like how many children have ready access to corn cobs? Uh, uh, without parents. Common. Without parents around? Because like they're pretty oh. like aren't they, they they're like pretty dangerous in and of themselves, right? You can cut yourself pretty bad on a corn cob. <laughs> what? No, the leaves what? on the corn cob are very sharp, aren't they? Oh no, I I mean when you buy it in the store, you don't get the leaves. You don't? No, we just get the, you just get the corn cob, in in like a plastic container. You do? I mean, you can buy it with leaves, I guess, but that's not very common. Usually, it's just like in the refrigerated area. You get like two corns on the cob in a plastic thing, in like a vacuum sealed bag. Okay, because here we sell them either frozen or you know with the leaves around it. I don't think we sell them frozen here, actually. Oh no, we we just sell corn frozen. We don't sell corn cobs oh, frozen. Oh, oh right. Yeah, okay. I see. Yeah, I yeah. we don't have I don't think we have a lot of corn cob in general. Uh only in only mm. a few months a year I think we have them fresh. Mm, well, I don't think they're I don't think they're fresh. <laughs> the ones that they sell here. I think we just import them from America or wherever. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So so they're just wrapped in like cellophane or Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, mm. I mean it's also like a part of growing up, isn't it? Trying stupid stuff. Or like, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, sticking a fork in an electrical outlet can legitimately kill you. That's true. That is true. So that's not really about like making a mistake and growing up, because you're not gonna grow up if you do that. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um. Something else. Uh. So that there is a one of the specific segments in it is called uh in Father Christmas Workshop or Father Christmas Workshop. Or mm-hmm. Santa's workshop, I guess, or however you would translate it. So there are, I believe, three or four things from this one which is censored. And they're just like tiny, you know, like one or two seconds which are cut off. So they're not like entire things, but, you know, just a few things. Um, There was a an African-American doll, like I said, which looked very, you know, you know, you know how Disney cartoons used to look with the, yeah. the brown face and the red lips and the watermelons and what, you know. That kind of stuff. What are those called? Bush babies? Aren't they what they used to be called? Bush babies, I think. Yeah. 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 So the, there was uh, one of those, and that was removed. And it was just like in a scene for like a second, but you know, it was cut off. Okay. Yeah, there were some very unflattering depictions of African Americans and African American culture in early Disney cartoons. Oh, yeah. I mean, like the crows from Dumbo is a pretty classical example. A lot of people didn't really realize that that was like making fun of black people but it it, it was (laughs) yeah or at least depicting them right like as these very uh crude and violent yeah thugs like yeah anyway oh uh, did you did you catch like you must have heard that like uh greedo from the phantom menace is such a like meant to be is is such an offensive jewish stereotype have you heard that like the 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 junkyard fly yeah thing yeah when you like, I I went back and rewatched that like uh, about a year ago, I think, and it's such a uh, blatant, and also just naming it Greedo is. <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought about that, but I haven't seen the Phantom Menace in years. So no, I, guess... I hadn't either, and I didn't think about it. But you know, going back, I'm just saying, Lucas might need some sensitivity training. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I want I want to send you a picture. Actually, we should do like um. An, an entire episode where we just look at stuff and laugh at it, and no one on yeah. the podcast will know what we're doing. <laughs> so that would be funny. That would be very funny. <laughs> just an hour of us. Picture. Uh-huh. There on the right is the Bush baby, and oh. on the left is this um, what's been called just like a uh, a depiction of a Jewish man. Okay, so what, what I'm seeing uh, from my own, like, let's do a Freudian analysis of me, what I'm seeing when I see these, yeah. this picture. On the left side of the picture, you see a wooden toy 
that looks mm-hmm. like uh, an old gentleman with a long white beard and a, a protruding nose that covers half the beard in a green suit with his hands out in the, uh, uh, I would say almost like Italian-American, like flat hands, <laughs> uh, um, like, what are you talking about? Like that type yeah. of gesture. Uh, he's dancing. doing the dance, I think, where you know he's the legs are going up and down, and then he's doing, yeah. the, you know, putting the arms close to him and way, and then way, you know. What's the, is it a Russian dance? Is thing. it the what's it called? Like the yeah, co- it's kind of uh, like the Russian dance thing. Yeah, 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 the one where you're like squatting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's that like thing. that one. Yeah, it Which, looks. Yeah, and it has he had. Oh, also, he's wearing like a bowler hat. Yes. So yeah, that does seem like a. It does seem like a take on a Hasidic Jewish person. Mm. I could see that, yeah. And then on the right, you have a very blatantly uh, Disney. Yeah. Have you have you ever read that Tintin goes to Congo? The, I've seen it. I haven't read it. Myself. Oh, okay. My brother has a copy of it, the the cartoon yeah. itself. He picked it up somewhere. I think maybe in England or something. But yeah, he mm. uh, yeah that kind of animation of black people. It seems like that type of depiction the the doll itself with a a, a very big mouth um mm. yeah it's uh yeah yeah i mean i mean there was this thing i saw i saw an, an italian movie called i think just santa claus where it also had mm. this this thing of children from all around the world come to santa and i don't know if yeah. that's like a catholic santa thing i feel like it might be because like uh there's a lot of media that's that's like Santa is you know Santa gets visitors from all around the world and like w- where I grew up you didn't talk about anyone visiting Santa like S- Santa would visit you I don't know why anyone would want to visit Santa ever because he's on the mm-hmm. North Pole but there would always be like pictures of Santa with um, children from Italy and Spain and Japan and. But yeah, I think it seems to go in that vein where it's like Santa. Not here's the the black girl. Here's the Hasidic Jewish man or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, I can see why they would edit it out. I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean it's very cartoony. It doesn't look like a person. No, I mean it. It is also a toy and a doll. Yeah, and back in those days, you did have dolls that looked like that. Um. That's true. Which, I mean, yeah. no, no endorsement. I'm just saying uh, mm. you did. I think the doll also says something like Yo Mama or something like that. Uh-huh. To Santa. Yo I, Mama. I can't remember. It, Yo Mama or Hey Mama or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then I think he just laughs and then he gets he takes the <laughs> OK stamp and he stamps her. So she, she owned him epic style with a Yo Mama joke. <laughs> and he appreciated <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I think that's that's all that was censored, actually. I thought there was more, but it was just those three things. Mm. Well, yeah. I do, yeah, uh, you do see posts by very angry conservatives who are like, they're censoring Disney cartoons, here's a download link for the originals. So I just love yeah. the, the, the mental image of all these conservatives hatefully and... and like gleefully watching these children's cartoons in their, you know, survival <laughs> bunkers to spite the liberals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think that if, if the Sweden Democrats uh, became the biggest party and, and Yimi Okison, the their leader, became prime minister, I think the first thing he would do is he would uncensor uh, <laughs> Donald Duck and his friends or whatever it's called. Now that's what power Donald looks like, folks. Be. Yeah. It's just, it's just stupid how how it actually turns into like a political debate every Christmas mm. about the merits or like the ethics of censorship or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. It it always it it pops up every once in a while in Denmark too. Just the debate about how we speak about people and to people. Um, mm. There was a very like uh, prominent public Danish figure a few years ago that wrote a very lengthy debate uh, post uh, to the biggest newspaper in Denmark defending the use of the Danish N-word, saying, Hmm. I'll say it if I want to. It's not offensive to me. And, (laughs) like... uh, Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it wouldn't be, would it? (laughs) Yeah, no, yeah, it was very misguided. Um, But the funny thing to me is, 
what used to happen up until like a few years ago was it would split people in half almost like it would be like you would have half of the people talking about it being very supportive and being like oh these young people or these mm. communists or whatever they don't know and then the other half would be going yeah it's about time someone said it but this time it kind of rippled out like no one jumped to defend her or to uh like debate her it, mm. it just went away again which is kind of giving me optimism in the sense that it feels like people aren't really um like it's 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 not really something it feels like we're we've moved past it in a way like we're yeah. it's not really a debate anymore you just don't say that like it's a like, very similar thing happened here um because there's this um just this treat that's like um like butter and cocoa and sugar right rolled into a ball you know it's called different things in different countries uh most people would call that a shock chocolate ball here hooked ball in swedish sure um and but some Older people and some very edgy younger people would call it an N-word ball. So, uh -huh. I mean, literally, you would talk about eating the ball sack of a black person. Uh, and, you know, eventually people started saying, we probably shouldn't call it that anymore. You know, like, it's a very, first of all, it's a very weird thing to say that you're, like, eating the, the testicles of a black man. And then also, <laughs> that word probably shouldn't be used. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and, and old conservative people got so defensive about about if I want to say I'm the, eating a black man's scrotum I want to say it <laughs> yes I mean you make fun but that is what happened um, and people were really upset and people took stances and political parties got involved uh and and yeah, I mean, conservatives were really upset that liberals and social justice warriors were trying to take away their testicles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, um, yeah, that's that amazing. That. Let me just look but something up. That right? the discussion has died down now. Just like in like you, you described in Denmark, it's just like people have sort of stopped caring, and no one really uses the N word to describe those things anymore. Which is good. A few people still do, and when they do, you mostly just ignore them because they're old and they will die eventually. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if that's what it is. I just feel like people like again. I I think it's I suspect it's this thing of the you know most people that say it aren't meaning it man maliciously, and then when they're made mm. aware of how it's how it hurts people, they stop saying it because they just they they're not really like they're they're not saying it. To make a, a a point, they're just saying it because yeah. that's what they grew up. You know, that's what the, that's what things were called when they were growing up. So they don't. A few, yeah. uh, like I said, a few a few young edgy people started using it, like a, a few neo Nazis, whatever. I suspect yeah. and hope that that's a much smaller group of people, so it becomes yeah. more yeah, of a is. statement and less of a a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I I hope so at least, but yeah. Uh, yeah. do you have that thing? Oh, I'm gonna try to say something in Swedish now. Uh, because <laughs> apparently in Sweden they're called Kretbulla. Kretbular? Kretbular. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I've heard it before, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, in Danish they're called Flurbulle, which is like a, it's like a creamy, it's like a creamy thing with cracker at the bottom. Um, oh. with uh, chocolate. Oh, right. Yes, they're they're called um, they're called different things in Sweden. Apparently, uh, they're sometimes called skumbol. Uh huh. Uh, they are sometimes called gredbullar, like like you said. They're sometimes called uh, kokos mums uh -huh. or mums mums, uh -huh. which just means yummy yummy. <laughs> nice. Is, yeah. Hey, you want I've some of that really yummy yummy? About. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I think that's probably what I would call it. Yeah. If, I, if someone just like handed it to me and was like, hey, what's this? I would probably say that's a mums mums or that's a cocos mums or whatever. All right. Like, yeah, that's a coconut yummy or that's a yummy yummy. Yeah. Which is so, such a childish thing to say, but that's, yeah. 
Yeah. It's uh, got a lot of nicknames, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're very popular in Denmark. People eat them all the time. They're super cheap, and they're, they're just mm. the, these things you hand out to children when there's a party or a birthday or whatever, because yeah. they're just the easiest thing to get. You can buy, like, yeah. 40 of them for, like, a <laughs> couple of bucks. Like, they're just, if you're having a, a children's birthday party, just get, like, 500 of mm. those, and they'll run around and scream. But anyway, yeah. they're called, as I said, flulebolle, which is like a cream ball in Danish. Mm. And um, they used to have... It's also yeah. slightly Freudian. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's, it's, it's not cream as in the... Yeah, the flula is literally just like a dairy thing. It's, it doesn't have a, a connotation in Danish. But yeah, it is like, yeah, cream ball does sound... I think there's mm. a, a, an American... Um, candy called a cream ball anyway uh, i digress um they used to be called or people used to refer to them as n-word kisses mm. and that was a very similar debate to what you just described um but yeah. they haven't called them that in i want to say like decades now um mm. but my dad still calls them that and every time i have to remind him that uh that's not what you call them anymore and he's like oh yeah 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 <laughs> and then he forgets and goes right back to calling and again like he's not he doesn't mean it ma- maliciously and he's not no, he's no, not of a course, of course he's an old man and he grew up mm. and when he when he grew up it said n-word kisses on the box and it's not a, yeah. a treat you go out and buy every day it's only something you think about when there's a children's party going on um mm. so yeah yeah it's I, I i choose to believe that he's simply just forgetting all the time this episode of Shit Island is brought to you by our lovely patrons over on patreon.com forward slash Ashley Scapegoat. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is, this, this was, this it wouldn't be, po- this type of rambling wouldn't be possible <laughs> without your support. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if you go to, to patreon.com forward slash Ashley Scapegoat, you can get some benefits and you can also listen to your name be read on, on the podcast or in a video of mine, which I'm going to do now. Thank you to Joshua Cheeseman. Dunk Junk Funk, Orsi Sabo Kitty, M Lim, Nyin Chan Min, John H N, Michael Rook, L or E I L, a capital L and or a lowercase L and capital I, difficult to distinguish there. Jedi Davian, Qua Graham, Gekabyte, and Emil Segerbeck. Thank you. You are the real OGs. 